Colin Quinn joined us and talked about being a guest of Sylvester Stallone on the set of Copland. Colin, can you please tell Jay the Harvey Keitel Copland story that you told me while we were filming this show? Oh, that was when uh, Stallone, when Stallone was the host of the of at SNL, so we had to go meet him in Jersey, you know, and pitch yeah. ideas to him, you know. And so they were shooting Copland, but we didn't know what Copland, you know. And then they took us to this warehouse where he was shooting, and he was the nicest guy. Stallone's the greatest guy, funny guy. For a guy that's that famous, not crazy. I'm sure he's crazy, but sure. I mean, with a, totally down to earth. But he goes, you want to watch the thing? We go, yeah. So we <laughs> end up watching, and it's the intense scene where they're all in a circle at the bar or in the back room somewhere. It's like the most intense scene in Copley, you know, for what yeah. that's worth, I'm, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Suddenly, Copland became LA Confidential in the past. Ten years. <laughs> but anyway, and then, um, and then, and then they just Harvey Keitel's looking. I'm going, boy. I'm thinking in my head, this guy's a real actor because I feel like he's staring me down and he wants to kill me right now. And then, in the middle of the scene, I don't know if this was in the script. I don't think it was. He goes. Excuse me, who's this in my eye line right here? Will somebody tell this guy to get out of my eye line? I don't want to depress anybody. And he went to this whole speech about somebody in his eye line. Well, it wasn't in the script. He was talking to me. And then, <laughs> and then Ray Liotta jumps on the bandwagon. He's in the scene too, Ray Liotta. Yeah. I mean, these guys are like my, you know, as if I had any <laughs> idols in acting, it would be these guys. Yeah. And they both turned on me. And then Stallone's like, you'll fucking talk to my friends like that. They'll stay here if you want. Because uh, they, they're like, could you get them out of here? Like, they basically kick us out. <laughs> and Stallone's like, fucking. And are you, are come you here watching? Are you, did you not get it at first? And start, and no, were you I actually, didn't. Were, I'm saying, were you watching and smiling while he's defending you? You don't even I know. He goes, smi- yeah, so I I'm saying, like, smiling. Stallone, Stallone's I'm defending just, you, and like you don't even know it's you. He's talking about. He goes, "Man, I wonder who the hell this guy is." Or no, no, up then no, I knew because we were the only ones in there. <laughs> oh, oh my God. part of the crew. Oh, but I my mean, God. I knew about when he said "eye line." I was like, "Uh oh, wait a minute." <laughs> and then, I mean, and then yeah. he just kept staring right at me, and just and then I never saw him since then. Thank God, for, lucky for him. But I, about three years ago, yeah, I lived downtown. And I'm walking on the street, and Harvey Keitel is walking by me. So I stop and look. I forgot about the incident. Yeah. And I'm looking at him standing, and he's just got that look like some asshole is staring at me. Yeah. You know that I don't. You know I don't. I don't want someone. But then you never, you never know if somewhere in the back of their, their sense memory, they remember they don't like you from somewhere. They don't know where. Yeah. One time, I got I bombed for Joan Jett. This is ex- and this time I know it was in the back of her sense memory. It's the exact. I bombed. They hired me at the Ritz. It was my first New Year's Eve gig, 1986 or 85. New Year's Eve, jo- opening for Joan Jett at the Ritz, which is what Webster Hall used to be called. It was called the Ritz on 13. So it's like a big deal. I'm going to yeah. get 500 bucks. 500 bucks, which I should have got beforehand because they never paid me. Oh, and here's man. why. So I'm opening for Joan Jett. I come there. It's all these. Don't jet kids, like 14 year old, like runaway girls. Also. So everybody's drinking. The Ritz is just a pit. And they go, Here's how they introduce me. The lights go down. Everybody goes crazy. Please welcome. They think it's Joan Jet, a comedian, Colin Quinn. I come out. People are like, What? What's going on here? They don't even know. They didn't even hear what they said. Nobody's doing comedy at shows in those. It was just starting, you know? Yeah. I, uh, so I'm rambling, you know, just doing my thing. No. It takes a minute. They're like, oh, this guy's trying to be funny. Boo, boo. I'm going, fuck you. They start, I go, fuck you too. They throw bo- Molson bottles at me. I'm ducking Molson bottles. It's 1986. Molson's still at the Ritz. Fuck you. <laughs> so then, I mean, it's getting ugly. So it's, it causes such a ruckus. The balcony, which is where the dressing rooms are, a light pops on the balcony. Who comes out on the balcony? Joan Jett. Oh, she looks man. like this. Looks at the crowd. Looks at me. He goes like this. <laughs> and walks oh, back man. in, lit like uh, you know, like like Caligula's wife or somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, gave, she gave you the Roman thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, and then they really turn. Ah, fuck you. And then, so then, like three years ago, I'm doing a benefit 
for a rock and roll thing. So it's really cool. Like Springsteen's there. I do my Springsteen attack and him joke. I the who that. is the, the who is there, right? Wow. So I go on and I do my set and as I'm you know and I did good, but it's like a inside thing. It's like a thousand people you know paid all this money to see the who up close. In like some, yeah. it's not even a theater. They set up chairs. It's like midtown. I can't remember where. But anyway, as I'm leaving, who's going on right after me to do a Who song? They're all doing Who tribute songs. Is Joan Jett, and she passes me and just gives me a look. And in the back of my mind, I know she's saying, "I know this asshole from somewhere." <laughs> and then she goes on stage and she goes, "Hey, I'm ready to do a song. I'm not some comedian. I'm gonna do some music for you." And I was like, she remembers somewhere in her mind's eye. She yeah. remembers that fateful night. Meanwhile, I'm the one that should be pissed. Yeah, yeah. Right. She, I'm like, absolutely. I'm like, should. She t- she could have given you. Paid. She could have given you like the the nod. It would have helped. Honestly, Colin, on the same show. I'm willing to help you get that money that you were never paid with juice. <laughs> yeah, and but she wouldn't be Joan Jett if she had come out on the balcony and said, "Hey, come on, give the guy a break." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah Is that really the to... Joan Jett move? I don't know when your base demo is Runaway Girls. I don't know if you have a forgiving <laughs> element to your fucking personality. Yeah. Well, now she has like wide mass bath, wide yeah. mouth bass lips. She looks and like got a weird, crazy face. She so. looks like one of those singing oh, really? fish on the wall. Fuck her, you. Yeah, she looks like uh, a Billy Bass, <laughs> like the big, big Burger King commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's the whaler. She's uh, yeah. Jo- I've heard a few unpleasant things about Joan Jett. It's funny. At least she got the introduction. That was the funniest thing about when I did the uh, tours with the rock bands was when it was just my time to go out. Like, there is, you know, all bands have some sort of, like, you know, sm- smoke and intro. I just got to grab a mic and go, mm, hey. hey, everybody, uh, what's this guy up front's fucking problem? Oh, man. <laughs> and I just like, start talking and just start doing, like, hey, everyone, so I'm a comedian. Uh, you guys oh. had a good time so far? I'd have to do all that stuff, like, just to give, oh, like, no. some sort of call and response. And then, but for sure, most people think that I'm uh, just I'm, a roadie, a fat roadie who grabbed a mic and tried to be funny. But what's right. great is it still exists on YouTube. I may have said this to you recently, too, but there's people who are filming me. There's some videos of me on those tours up on YouTube, but it's someone filming me from, like, the lawn. And yeah. what's what's great is when you're on stage in those big situations, too, if half the people that are there laugh, it sounds, like, enormous because there's so many yeah. people there. But on the lawn, you can really hear how isolated – it's just this guy filming me from the lawn far away. You hear my voice distant in the background, and just to hear the cadence <laughs> of punchline, and it's like punchline, punchline, all the people around him doing something else, and you just hear him go, ha! <laughs> <laughs> like just the one guy getting it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Dan, Jay, and Colin discuss comedians who sell their own merch after a show. Colin, earlier in the show, we were yeah. talking about um, merch, selling merch after shows. Yeah. And we were talking about the kind of people who, like, I've had so many people on the road that I've seen that it will sell merch com- completely unrelated even to their comedy. It's just stuff they think they can sell. <laughs> like, you know, they do a comedy set and then they do, and then they sell, like, Chinese finger traps or something at the end. <laughs> Things that make no sense. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we were saying through time, or, or or the obvious, like, you know, the the T-shirt that has that one joke that you closed on or whatever. Yes, but, yes. But I was saying, you must, in your career, have seen some. What's the most bizarre merch you've ever seen, or just most laughably? Or have you ever had to, I mean, I, I, I was lucky enough to come up in the time where that back table at the cellar was a thing still, and it was, uh, and you guys would rip each other apart, myself included. And uh, does it, was there anybody you laughed out of merch ever? I know you've laughed people out of headshots. I watched that happen. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll reference you to Keith Pudgem, Pudgem Robinson. Yes. And we tried <laughs> to laugh. Remember, we all, I thought we beat Patrice out of that uh, pendant with his microphone, but it didn't work. He kept wearing it anyway. <laughs> oh. Oh. The microphone was pen. there. Was there anybody that you found out was selling merch? Like, and they tried yeah, to hide from. I the... remember one guy in the eighties that was selling merch, and I forget the catchphrase. But the catchphrase was basically about, uh, like, if you be, like being the victim of traumatic attacks. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't punchy, and it wasn't. I was just like. That's crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but, it's just like, and nobody man. sold merch in those days, you know? 
Yeah, so coming out, with, coming out with a I Got Molested t-shirt after your 30-minute set? <laughs> Basically, yeah. It was crazy. But yeah, it's always, it's always, I mean, merch is such a big thing. I tell you, my favorite is, uh, is uh, DePaulo, my favorite merch-related story. He was on the road and he goes, he was bullying the middle act the whole weekend. They were in a condo <laughs> together. Yeah. And at the end of the weekend, the kid, go, Nick goes, yeah, that's right. Because guess what? You're the middle. I'm the headliner. And the kid goes, you're not a headliner. You're a closer, but you're no headliner. Whoa. And then Nick goes, yeah, who do you call a headliner? Rodney Carrington? And he goes, he did 30,000 in T-shirts alone last year. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to measure comedians. You go, yep. <laughs> yeah, well, what you don't know is, is he ha- he sold his own calendars. And you know how much yep. he got? 20 grand. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I brought T-shirts. I've told this on here before, but I brought T-shirts one time to Edmonton, Canada. So just first of all, lugging this box of multiple size T-shirts to sell. And they go. So, and I stood back behind this bar at the end of the show, feeling like an asshole, even just doing it. Like, all of a sudden, I'm running a, a fucking merch booth. And yeah. uh, the first guy came up and asked me for two shirts. I said forty dollars. He handed me a credit card. This is before Square and all those things where you could take credit right. cards. I go, oh, I don't have a credit card uh, machine at all. But they put me up, you know, next to the ATM here on purpose. And he just looked at the ATM machine. He looked back at me while he tapped his card on the table and just really gave it a good think. Yeah. And then after about like twenty seconds, he goes, "Nah." He just left. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I can't put myself through the humiliation of it. I yeah, <laughs> especially doing it like if I sold merch now, I'd probably do all right in merch because there's like fans coming to the show. But that's right. why I'm so I'm blown away by people who just sell merch. Just just like road dogs who go to like the clubs where they're not really drawing. It's just an audience who comes to this place and then trying to sell them the shirt. You really design something with your heart and then someone just puts it in a junk drawer in their house, really. Yeah, but I mean, once every middle had merch, too. Like, I've gone on the road, and the middles are like, do you mind if I sell merch after the show? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I guess it's fine, but, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I say fine it, always. There's too. something wrong with it, but, you know. I had a weekend in Florida where the middle told me how much money he made for merch, and it was more than I got paid headlining. Oof. And I was like, <laughs> I just I couldn't tell him that. I had I to wear that. it like it was the worst poker face because he goes, man, can you believe that I made over $1,400 in merch sales alone? And I went, Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, they come with like a movie wad. Yeah, I was like, oh, wow, wow. I barely could get here. I buy these Chinese finger traps at wholesale, and I sell them yeah. for $5 a pop. <laughs> Colin, you did, did, you ever, did you ever have merch? No, I never did. I mean, I've had, like, after my shows off-Broadway, they'd sell, like, merch, but I never, I would never, uh, you know, lower myself, even though I was like, <laughs> ooh, I wonder how they did. But it was mostly paying back... <laughs> But mostly the theater would make the money. I don't even think I make money off that, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. With Was there anyone at the back table at the seller that you found out was selling merch in a way that, like, they were trying to hide it from you guys? Sounds like a Bobby Kelly thing, something Bobby Kelly no, would do. Oh, I guarantee. But, I mean, Voss is the master of selling merch because he will, you know, he could be sitting, if he had an audience with the Queen of England, he'd be like, Voss.com, Voss Roast, yeah. I got T-shirts. <laughs> You know, so I, he just doesn't even flinch. And that's, if you're going to sell merch, that's how you should do it. No apologies. I can't, I can't believe I would even overlook Voss like that. When I first moved to the city and was trying to get check spots at Stand Up New York, between shows I would watch Voss sit outside with his CDs. His hands are, yeah. perfectly, his hands are perfectly sized to fan out four CDs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're perfectly sized for it. Well, um, I mean, I've known Voss forever. And I'm still shocked that he has like eight eight different uh, CDs. Yeah, maybe it's just different album covers. It's just the same album, <laughs> just with four different titles. Yeah, hey, yeah, that's all different stuff. Bobby, when I opened for Bobby, he was selling merch, and he would of do course. the thing of he would do the thing of Bobby of being nice and jovial and fun until it was time for business, and he'd be like, "Where were you? I need you to sell shirts." And I was like, "I didn't know I was signing up for that." Oh, I don't know. Oh, he goes, "The worst." Yeah, my- you're on my podcast, dude. You got to help me sell. All right. Listen, <laughs> I brought Christine with me one time. I was going to sell some CDs after the show. And I brought Christine. And while Christine is a, she could be a motherfucker when she's producing something of organizing and shuffling people around and telling them firmly where they have to go. 
I was like, could you sell these? And then like two people I saw walk up and goes, what's that? And she just went, I, I don't know. And she, she just panicked, and I was like, well, that's not going to help at all. Well, <laughs> like, well Bob know. Levy used to have his wife stand in the back when I worked with Bob Levy a few times. Mm-hmm. And he had his, his wife would stand in the back. And in the middle of his set, he'd stop the show and go, listen, I'm not doing one more joke until they, I sell two fucking CDs. I'm not doing another joke. Two people from this crowd walk over and buy a CD right now, and I'm not doing a joke until they do. And two people would get up and walk over and buy a CD. That is crazy goes, to hold the audience hostage like that. Goes, All right, That's everybody, right. Now, now you earned it. I'm going to suck dressing out of this girl's asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's time for me to eat blue cheese out of a butt. You guys have yep. bought enough. You guys, you guys did your part. Now I'll do mine. I can't imagine yeah. having the confidence of being on stage at a helium and being like, sorry, everyone. You don't get another voice <laughs> until you've bought two of my extra yeah. large T-shirts. Man, that's oh, yeah. Funny. And he said it. He didn't say it. Matt, sorry. He said, hey, 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 hey. This is what's going to happen right now. <laughs> yeah. He yeah, wasn't it, dude, that is so fucking crazy to be able to stop down a show to sell your own CD, to sh- sell a but show that's, with them. But that's, to me, that personality is part of comedy. It's like you can't flinch. Like yeah. one thing you can't ever flinch. You just gotta, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or they're gonna, or they're gonna take you as the sucker. If you flinch, yeah. they're gonna take your money. Yeah. That really is a fucking carny. Fucking. <laughs> we we really are a bunch of carnies. Just we going are in one- a low. We are in a low life business. <laughs>